I picked up a few of these cheese slicing kits to build into a few cutting boards, but the first thing I need to do is grab a little bit of walnut and maple to clean up to make these boards out of. Since I only have a small bench top jointer, I cut the boards to more manageable lengths at the miter saw before firing it up. Each of the boards needs to be ran through to get one flat face as well as one flat edge that is 90 degrees to that face. I'll be headed back to the jointer multiple times in this project to clean up the edges in order to get nice seamless glue up lines. Finally it's time to head over to the planer and flatten those opposite faces of the boards and get everything nice and parallel. I want the final length of this cutting board to be 15 inches, so I took the pieces back over to the miter saw and cut them to a rough length. The width of the board will be a total of 10 inches, composed of two 3 inch strips of walnut on the outside edges and a 4 inch strip of maple down the center. The built in cheese slicer needs a groove down the width of the board that is at least 5 and 3 quarters inches long. This allows the piece of wire to slice through that delicious piece of Colby Jack or whichever type of cheese you would prefer. I don't want the groove to go through the entire 10 inch width of the board, so instead I'm going to first build the board in two halves, cut the groove into one of the halves, and then glue the final board together to make it 10 inches wide. The last thing I need to do before the glue up is to head back over to the joiner and clean up the joining edges to make sure my glue seams will turn out invisible. Next up is to pull out the Bessie clamps and glue together the walnut and maple for each of the two halves using some Type Bond 3 waterproof glue. With one panel clamped up and drying, it's time to do the exact same thing with another piece of walnut and maple. The steps are so exactly the same, it may make you wonder if I actually filmed it twice or just copy and pasted the original footage. The world may never know, but in the end, I ended up with two panels clamped and drying. Finally, it was time to pull out the crosscut sled to cut a groove in one of the panels, three inches from the edge and halfway through the thickness of the board. Once that was complete, I could cut both panels to their final widths and then head back over the joiner one more time to clean up their edges for the final glue up into one piece. In the end, I have one panel that is 6 inches wide that I cut a groove into and one panel that is 4 inches wide to give me a final width of 10 inches. Each panel has a 3 inch strip of walnut on its outer edge and when combined, they will give me a 4 inch strip of maple that looks like one solid piece down the middle. While you're watching me sand, I thought I'd take a break from editing this video to talk about my online store, as well as ways you can help support the channel. If you're a woodworker like me, you may be interested in these acrylic face templates that I make on the laser. These are a great way to use your router to make the faces for these wooden jack lanterns. These wooden jack lanterns are a really great item to try to sell around the Halloween season, and you can make them easily using your router, an acrylic template, and one cedar fence picket. If you're not into making things, there's always a variety of items in my store that I've made by hand that are up for sale. One of them are these wooden pattern coasters. These are beautiful and make a great gift. There's other ways to help out the channel without buying anything from the online store. One way would be the affiliate links at the bottom of each video that I place there. When you buy something from Amazon using one of those affiliate links, Amazon gives me a little bit of money without charging you anything extra. Another easy thing to do is like this video, drop something in the comments, or subscribe to the channel. Doing that along with watching the video to its entire length tells YouTube that you really enjoyed the video and it will suggest it to other people. I appreciate everyone who tunes in and watches me build projects on my channel. Beyond that, anything extra you do is just a little bonus to keep me motivated. Now let's go ahead and get back to the video. Thanks for watching. After getting it sanded flat, it's time to pull the crosscut sled out one more time and cut the entire board to its final length of 15 inches, taking a bit off each side to clean up the edges. Then it's over to the router table to round over all those edges and give them a nice finished look.
One last thing I need to do for the cheese slicer to work is to drill a quarter inch hole into the side of the board for the slicer to slide into. This dowel centering jig I purchased for the lofted bed project worked out great to make sure this hole came out nice and centered in the board. The hole needs to be 3.75 inches deep, so I drilled as deep as I could with the centering jig installed, and then I removed it so my bit could reach the rest of the way in. Now it's time for every woodworker's favorite part, sanding. I worked slowly through the grits until I reached the final grit of 220. This walnut and maple board is actually the second board that I have made with these built-in cheese slicer kits. If you would like to give one a try, but want a simpler design on your first attempt, check out my video where I make a smaller board from a solid piece of walnut. That board was simply cut to size and had the groove cut all the way across its width. It was a great little project to easily figure out the groove and holes needed to install the slicer. One important thing I do on every cutting board I make is to raise the grain by spraying it with a bit of water. Not only does this give you a nice preview of what it's going to look like once you apply oil to it in the end, but if you don't raise the grain and then sand it one final time, then it will happen the first time the board is washed and it will always have a rough feel to it. Before I do that last sanding though, I want to run this board through my laser and put a nice little monogram into the bottom corner. Then it's back to the shop to do that final pass of sanding. Finally, one of the best steps, applying some food grade mineral oil to the board. I love watching as the grain pops as the oil hits it and seeing the final beauty of the wood revealed. Some people like to dunk their entire board into a bucket of mineral oil, but I prefer to apply several coats over a few days, letting it slowly seep into the wood and dry. After that, it's time to apply a coat of my homemade board butter made from a combination of mineral oil and locally sourced beeswax. Not only do I use this as a final protective coating, but I apply it as well throughout the year to all my cutting boards, and you can buy some for yourself in my online store. After the wax has dried, it's time to install some feet onto the cutting board. I don't typically put feet on the bottom, but in this case, having it lifted slightly off the countertop will make using the built-in cheese slicer easier. I've designed this helpful jig for drilling the holes for the feet that is also available for purchase in my online store. All that is left is to finally install the cheese slicer. The handle slides right into the hole that was drilled, and then a thin wire is placed in the groove. Tension is added by tightening the screw in the handle, and everything is complete. Overall, this project turned out beautiful. The measurements required for the cheese slicer seemed a bit daunting at first, but in the end were fairly easy to accomplish. I hope you enjoyed following along with this project, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, happy making.